I'm standing in the middle of the Eugene Desert. It's 45 degrees and it's very, very hot. It's also called the, the Amble of the Sun. And it's really unexplainable hot for somebody like me. And not far from here, down there, Lawrence of Arabia have passed here many times. So, but as I told you in my first review, this was the place of the Essenes and of Yeshua. And we must remember that at the time of Yeshua, Christianity wasn't invented yet. Nobody, I mean the Essenes or the Brotherhood of Light and Yeshua and Johannan and Mary and the Magdalene, they didn't know anything about Christianity. It was not part of their background. They were initiated in the mystery schools. As I told you, Yeshua was initiated at Qumran. Um, and in the Qumran, uh, at the Brotherhood of Light, in their, all, their institutions all around the Middle East, Egypt, Syria, and especially here in Palestine and Israel. So, I've taken you out here in the desert to speak to you about the veil. There's a veil between us and the other side. You could also say that it, there is a veil between our reality and the heavenly reality. And this was one of the main purposes of, of the, the Brotherhood of Light, that they um, were, were working with uh, inventing tools, spiritual tools, in order to penetrate that veil. And this is something you could call it technology of the soul. And this is a technology, I, I really don't like that expression, but this is uh, some, a practice, a spiritual practice, that uh, we really need today in order to, uh, to solve the problems we are surrounded by. And as long as we are looking for answers all the wrong places, for example, down at the, at the small self level, and we, at the, we, if we don't know that there is something like spirit, we have to raise everything to the spirit level, we will never, ever uh, find the answers to or solutions to our problems. So that's why the message of Yeshua is still very, very important today. So it all comes down to if we can accept that we are first and foremost spirit. If we won't recognize that, we can forget everything, all about finding solutions to anything in our life. That is the main purpose for us to come here, is to remember and to reconnect to spirit. And that was something that, uh, that is, 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 was lost with the, when uh, the Essenes or the Brotherhood of Light weren't around anymore. Uh, it disappeared, the, the knowledge disappeared with them. And um, you should remember that uh, the Brotherhood, their main purpose was to, to uh, clear the way or, or prepare the way for the coming Messiah. And uh, a lot of scholars have been thinking and been um, doing a lot of thinking about what happened to the, the Essenes or the Brotherhood of Light after that Yeshua came. I mean, remember, when, Yeshua, when they found Yeshua and recognized him as their Messiah and their teacher of righteousness, their work was over. So they just followed him. They became his dis disciples and they became teachers in his movement. And remember, this is not a kind of church or something. A lot have been written about the church in Jerusalem that uh, Yaakov, or James, as it said in, in English, was uh, the brother of, of uh, the master, was led by Jacob. But it was not a church as we would recognize it in, in a classical sense. It was a movement uh, that was set up in order to free people. Just remember, they, they were, they were, were organizing 
uh, workshops for ordinary people who could not read or write or anything. They took everything out of the mystery school and placed it on a, a tray for common people. And in many ways that became the inspiration for what Christianity is today. And despite that all this knowledge is almost lost, uh, some of it survived in the Catholic Church and especially in the Orthodox churches. So we can still find the knowledge there and some of the practices and ceremonies are still uh, to be found there. But the, if we want to go deeper into the, that, what I call the technology of the soul, we have to, to, to look elsewhere. And if you remember that I told you before that brothers, the Brotherhood of Light, were masters of metaphor. Masters of metaphor. Which means that they were, uh, they knew that everything had to be interpreted uh, uh, again and again. And um, for example, when they found uh, Yeshua, the Messiah, in Bethlehem, um, that was, you know, Beth Bethlehem means the city of bread, the city of bread. So there is a metaphor to, for that, of course, because Yeshua was the bread of life. So in that way, everything counts. And I mean, this is just scratching the surface because there's so much more I could tell you about it. Remember at the university at Qumran, they had scrolls on each and every letter scrolls only about one letter on all 22 letters in the Aramaic and Hebrew uh, alphabet. And that plays a very, very important part in their wisdom and knowledge. The veil. How to penetrate the veil. If I use another metaphor, maybe you will understand a little bit of what I'm trying to tell you. When Yeshua was crucified, at the exact moment when he gave himself over to spirit, something happened in the temple in Jerusalem. The veil that was covering the Holy of the Holies was split in two and the Holy of the Holies was exposed to everyone, for everyone to see. What was that all about? The Holy of the Holies. When we can read about in, uh, in, uh, in uh, the Old Testament about the Jews carrying the tabernacle with the ark through the desert, you should remember that you and I and everybody else are carrying uh, uh, the, the ark or a little bit of the ark with us every day from the minute that we incarnate on this planet till the day we leave. It is the secret chamber, the secret chamber of the heart. That's the holy of the holiest. And this is something that we have to understand that there is a veil covering. So we can live a whole life without ever knowing that it, everything that we were looking for was, was right there in front of us or inside of us. So what we really have to learn is to open up to that reality. And in my book, The Law of Light, some of the most important teachings from the Brotherhood of Light and from Yeshua is to be read there. And it is the Beatitudes. But not only the Beatitudes, but in a very special translation. Because it is so that if you don't know, if you don't know the key to that technology, the key is really to understand the transpersonal psychology behind the Aramaic language that Yeshua and the Essenes or the Brotherhood of Light were speaking. If you don't have that key, you won't be able to really understand what is in there. So, 
I will try and read some of it for you later. But that was very much part of penetrating the veil, to have an understanding of that law of light. And it's not only of understanding, but also to practice that law of light. That makes all the difference. Remember our teacher, the master, he said, knock and it will be opened. Ask and it will be given. What does it mean to knock? What does it mean to open or to ask? It means that we, you and I, have to do something. We really have to understand. We cannot just read a book about something uh, fantastic. We can read a, sp a good spiritual book and afterwards we can say, oh, wow, that was very inspirational. We have to actually take the instructions and try to um, practice them in our own everyday life. So to knock is to start praying, is to start meditating. And if you don't know how to pray or what it means to pray, find somebody who can learn you and tell you all about it. It's, I have, as much as I was able to put into that small book, The Law of Light, it is there, you can go and read it there. But you must be very, very um, alert because there's so much information in that book or so much wisdom in that book that you could easily miss uh, uh, things by just rushing through the book. You must really read every sentence and understand every word in order to understand what's, what's really in that book. So it's all about trying to to um, reach a certain state of awareness, an exalted state of consciousness from where you can penetrate the, trade the whale. That is every seer's big uh, task in their life. It is to find a way to penetrate the whale because only by penetrating whale will you be able to read in the book of life. And in the Book of Life, you can read everything on every soul there is, including your own. So this is very important to understand. This is, you must also be aware of your intentions, because that's another very, very, there's metaphor and there's intent. Why do you want to do this? Why are you doing this? What are your intentions? What lies behind the things you are doing? And you must ask yourself every day. My teacher in this incarnation, Calais de Montségur, he started his day by raising up from his bed and uh, giving himself over to the universe. Every night he sat down on the bed, going through everything, and just in order to see if there was something he could do otherwise, other, in a new way, or, or otherwise, yeah. And the third thing is gratitude. If we cannot feel gratitude for have all what we have already achieved, what have, has been given to us right from the start, then there will be no opening of the veil. We can see a lot of lower astral projections from ourselves and from everybody else. There's so much fuss and noise going on in the spiritual circles today that it's unbelievable. People are writing books about, I'm sorry to say, bullshit. It's misunderstandings and it is noise. And I know this is a general uh, kind of prejudice uh, that I'm putting up, but nevertheless, I have been reading a lot of books uh, from the so-called new spiritual movement and I mean if you want to write a book you must write a book on your own experience don't take anything from anywhere that you have not experienced yourself and 
it's the same thing all over. You can, you can read in books that they have taken from another book and they have taken from another book and it's just repeating, repeating, repeating the same story. Like, if, for example, if you want to, to read about UFOs, you find out very soon that it's exactly the same stories that they, everybody tells again and again and again. So, this is about your own experience. Your own experience. That is what this is all about. And believe me, honesty towards oneself, to have the guts to see all your own shadows in the eye and invite them up out to dance, that is the way to develop higher states of consciousness only by inviting your shadows out so they can be transformed. That is what Yeshua, he came here to tell us all about. The transfiguration was all about that. Follow my example, he said, and you will do even greater deeds than I, greater miracles. And he also said, remember, you are all children of God. You are all children of God. I'm not the only one, but I was the first one, the first soul here. I was Adam. Adam means blood and earth. And the combination of blood and earth is man. So that is on, on, the, on the, the material plane. But the most important thing was that he also, first and foremost, was spirit. And so are.